As you guys know, I've been playing a lot more destroyers and cruisers recently. Battleships and their RNG have been frustrating me a little bit. I've been playing some different classes, and I think variety is really good. Today we're taking a look at the Daring, and I think that this, well, this isn't a very hot take, but Daring has to be one of the best destroyers at tier 10, especially for your first destroyer line. I think that the entire British line is pretty solid on the way up, but the reward at tier 10 is really amazing. The DPM is filthy. This ship is scary for even the best gunboats to go up against. I'm talking even ships like Smallend with Radar, Ragnar. These ships have to worry about the daring. And that's not something that you can say about every single tech tree ship. Obviously the Shimakaze melted in front of us. We had the help of a Stalingrad radar there, but we're gonna come up against a Vampire 2, a bit of a premium counterpart to the Daring. And I really want to take fights in this ship. I think that's why I really enjoy it so much. It's a very aggressive destroyer trying to take engagements because we have a heal. It's one of the reasons I think this ship is so good for beginners and this entire line in general. Not a lot of DDs get heals and certainly not very many DDs have these long duration personal hydros. It's not not long enough range that you're gonna get baited into pushing aggressively, like with a German Hydro. Sometimes Z52 players get a little bit overconfident, let's say, with their Hydro pushes, they end up dying. This Hydro, that's not gonna happen. But what it will do is save you from a lot of torpedoes. Daring is very maneuverable, but having that extra warning from torpedoes is very nice. And taking an engagement with a ship like the Vampire 2, a dangerous gunboat, is something we want to do since we have a heal. If the Vampire 2 doesn't, he's limited by the amount of HP that he has at the end of this engagement. I am not. I think that flexibility and forgiveness of the British destroyer line makes it a perfect option as your first destroyer line. I've said that the American line is also a good line to go up, but they don't have that forgiving heal or personal hydro. I think the smokes are also better for most people on the uh, British line, since they don't last very long and you get a lot of them and they come up very quickly. It means that if you don't place your smoke perfectly, that's okay. You can use these smokes to get away and disappear from enemy's fire. You can use these smokes very, very often and not feel like you're wasting a large chunk of your resources into a match. And I think one of the issues with a lot of beginner friendly parts to games is that they tend not to scale, right? To make a ship relatively beginner friendly or to make part of a game relatively beginner friendly, generally it doesn't scale well into the late game as you get better or as things advance as your player skill or just the meta changes. I think that the daring has a lot of room for you to improve as a player. The skill ceiling on this is very, very high. This ship, well, maybe not the absolute pinnacle of tier 10 DD gunboats, and you don't see it as much in competitive anymore. I think that it is still so amazing in random battles and often rivals some of those ultimate gunboats like the small end and maybe the Marceau, that kind of thing as well. The DPM is pretty close, the shell velocity, of course, is something you have to deal with, but the utility, the personal ability of this ship to carry games is immense. You're not helping your teammates a ton with smoke screens, you're not helping a ton with the hydros, but what you are doing is you're providing a very, very aggressive platform to go out and hunt enemy DDs and win capture zones. And once you've done that, like we have in this game, two solo caps to our name, we can go and deal with the enemy team's larger ships. Daring has some of the best fire starting potential out of all of the destroyers. The ship absolutely farms witherers and battleships, well, battleships suffer, <laughs> let's just say that. Daring is one of the few destroyers that I really, really never want to see on my flank. Most of the time, it's because this ship will smoke up like I am here, and if I'm permanently being lit by airplanes or other teammates of the daring, well, this is what happens. It's just never ending HE spam that causes a ton of fires. And the reason why I say this ship over some others, I would rather fight, I would rather fight a Marceau. I'd rather fight a Kleber because they don't have the smoke screen. Those ships are much harder to play. A lot of them don't have as good healing. 
they don't have the ease of use that a daring has. So I find that unless the player is extremely good in a ship like the Smallend, Ragnar, Marceau, Kleber, I tend to be able to deal with them. Darings, however, even if I think it's just an average player in a daring, I still really am nervous because this ship is so good. It's just a very consistent experience. Not quite the ceiling as those other ships, but it's the consistency here. So if you're looking to get into DDs, I've probably talked on enough about how this is good for <laughs> beginners to learn from. Now on to this game specifically. This one is a bit of a monster carry job, and you might not be thinking that this game needs carrying because we're well up on caps, we're pretty even on ships. That's about to change. I don't know about you guys, but I've certainly been noticing a lot of over committing and over pushing lately. Our team had a huge, huge cap advantage and decided to push into the enemy's spawn and decided to overcommit. And now we're going to start to lose a lot of our ships. And this is where I have some of the most fun in World of Warships. It's decision making that really has the game on the line. What am I going to do to win this game? How am I going to play my ship in such a way that it develops the game more positively in our team's favor? This can be going out and dealing damage. It can be positioning myself in such a way to deal with the enemy's pushes, or maybe I'm going for cap control, or maybe I have to run away. Maybe I'm trying to spot for my teammates. All of these things come at the cost of not being able to do some of the other ones. If I'm dealing damage, I'm probably not spotting as well as I could have. I'm in a smoke screen or behind the islands. If I'm chasing an enemy destroyer on one flank, I can't go contest the other cap on the other side. It's opportunity cost. I'm sure you guys are well aware of that. And these late close games are my absolute favorite in World of Warships. I'm really not in that kind of mode though yet. We're gonna get there as uh, this game progresses. I'm thinking this game's in the bag, so I'm just in damage farmer mode. I'm just blindly following where the biggest HP pools are and going after them. Montana's given us enough broadside. Of course, we're gonna use the armor piercing. I haven't talked about that as much, but much like the Minotaur, the improved pen angles and the uh, short fuses on the Daring AP is absolutely amazing. And it crushes even destroyers, but not thin destroyers. I find that against things like Shimakaze, which are very narrow DDs, it's better to shoot the HE. But if I'm fighting another Daring that's broadside, a gearing, especially old gearing, I haven't really fought new gearing, but bigger ships, Ragnar especially, Ragnar melts to this AP. It's really, really, really good. So it's a little tricky to know when to use it, especially since most DDs are gonna angle a lot as soon as they shoot, see you shooting AP, that I tend to shoot HE more. But just know the AP on this ship is extremely good. And it can be extremely powerful against a lot of cruisers as well, since your HE is only gonna pen superstructures on some of these larger ships. And since cruisers tend to have these smaller superstructures, like we're on a battleship, I'm able to easily farm out an entire battleship's HP pool through their superstructure. I can't do that as much with cruisers. So doing that AP damage to a Yoshino like this is really, really, really solid. You notice we've lost a few ships now. I've been trying to chase down this Yu Yang, and he's done an excellent job of getting away. Daring is not the fastest ship in the world, but if one's chasing you, one wrong move can mean he catches up and easily takes you out, because there's a lot of firepower at the nose of a Daring. So this Yu Yang played very well to get away from me, played towards his teammates, and is even getting a little bit of chip damage in. This game, though, is getting much, much closer. Our Hindenburg is in a very, very tough position, and unfortunately for us, our two destroyer friends are just kind of following us around the map. <laughs> They've been doing that for a little while now. I don't really blame the Shimakaze too much, um, but the Holland has a lot of HP still and is very good against carriers, so he can kind of roam by himself and do reasonably okay. Also, make note that the Stalingrad is going to get into the A-cap soon. But we're gonna try and take out this Yoshino. I probably didn't have to open up here, bit of a risk that I took, but slow down and turn out is a pretty easy dodge, and there is the Yoshino taken out. And now all we have to do is live as a team. That's it. If we live, we win this game. And well, with 153k, Confederate, a couple caps to our name, I think I did an excellent job.
And then the Holland takes a torpedo. <laughs> and the Stalingrad is going to get into A. Potentially, the Stalingrad has his radar up again, which is pretty dangerous for us. Yu Yang comes back and kills the Holland, but still, we're up on our cap points. Even though the enemy team is going to control all the remaining caps, all we have to do is win. This is one of the trickier parts to these late game scenarios, to know if you need to win by just living, or if you have to go out there and deal some damage. This one, all we had to do is live, and that's what we did. Fortunately, our Shimakaze knew that as well, and ran away, and we managed to clutch this one out. 161k damage is pretty good, although it's not the insane damage record kind of game. But what we did do is we dealt a lot of critical damage to the enemy team. That means like destroyers, that kind of thing. Very valuable damage for base XP. And yeah, our base XP is pretty high. Two and a half thousand, especially once the second best on our team is nearly a thousand below us. Pretty good result. I really, really had a lot of fun playing the Daring, and I think it should be on the shortlist if you don't have this ship already. It is truly excellent. As for the build that I've been running on the Daring, it's a bit of a conservative build, I would say. I'm going for both Superintendent and Survivability Expert. There's some builds out there where people go after a little bit more DPM and actually sacrifice either Superintendent or Survivability Expert, not taking that extra healing, since there's more than enough Hydros and Smokes without Superintendent. I'm taking it though to get all the healing I can. That's what I really value in this ship is its ability to come back after receiving some damage and playing a little bit aggressive. Of course, we're going full concealment. Adrenaline Rush is just awesome. This skill is perfect for a ship that is constantly fluctuating in its HP and could even run relatively close to low HP and still be very, very effective using those massive amount of smoke screens and of course using some healing to stay alive. Last stand, of course, this is a must, preventive maintenance as well. Pretty standard build, I would say. A little conservative on not going full guns, but I like, I like the extra security. That's what I'm going for. Of course, we're taking main battery mod three, concealment, no propulsion. And that's because propulsion doesn't exist on the daring since it already has a baked in extremely strong acceleration. Going aiming systems mod one since the DPM really is everything here and we wanna hit as many shells as we possibly can. I think this is a pretty standard daring build and it works extremely well for me. This ship is a ton of fun to play aggressively, especially in the early game. You can get away with some very aggressive plays that can set your team up for wins and still be effective into the late game using that extra healing. So let me know what you think of the daring specifically and maybe the whole British line. Do you think it's also one of the better ones for beginners? Drop it in the comments down below. I'm sure some people would love to know. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.